everyone simon here today i'm going to talk about how to attract the right partner for you no astrology no techniques the only thing you're going to have to know is your dharma type and um, a while back i wrote uh, three books the first of which is called the five dharma types sacred wisdom ancient wisdom for modern living something like that and the second is called sex love and dharma um, and we cover ancient uh, methods and philosophies around love and how they can apply to modern relationships. And I think there's a lot that has been lost that can give us uh, a lot of help, even in the 21st century, in the age of AI. Um, and Ayurveda, the science of life and the cycles of life, has a lot to say about that. Um, as does Jyotish Vedic astrology and so forth. But like I said, there's no astrology here today. So just kick back and um, sort of enjoy this. Um, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I, as you know, I have a product called Dilanu, which is an algorithm that we've developed for matching people and finding out how compatible people are. But before, even more primal, primary to compatibility is, are you living your true self? Are you living your best life? Are you putting yourself in a position to meet the right people for you? Because even though you may be compatible with someone, if they're not truly on the same soul level as you, um, that can create difficulties. Or if you're on the wrong path in your life, that can create difficulties. So the first step, so there are three steps. Um, step one involves finding your Dharma type. So finding your Dharma type entails um, understanding who you are, what your talents and assets are, what your liabilities and weaknesses are. And uh, there is a test to find your type. You don't have to uh, sort of wonder about it. And by the way, if you're born, if you're in India and you're born in a Brahmin family, your Dharma type isn't this, doesn't have to be Brahmin. One of the tenets of the, the age that we live in is that uh, Dharma type is not hereditary. And uh, neither are the Dharma types hierarchical. So there's no one type better than another. Brahmins aren't better than Kshatriyas. That is, educators <clears throat> are no better than uh, warriors, laborers, outsiders, or merchants. We're all equal. We're all fingers on the hand. Uh, that work together to, you know, grasp and, and, and accomplish things. So step one is know and understand your Dharma type. And one of the best ways is if you have my book, any of my books, there is a test. If you don't, you can take the free test on my website. Go to spirittype.com. This is my old website, uh, but it's still good for uh, a bunch of things. Click on the Dharma test right there. Dharma test. Okay. You, you don't have to, I don't even know if this works anymore. Just click here to continue and uh, begin the test. Okay. It, after the test is done, you'll get uh, two of the top choices, meaning that you're likely one of those Dharma types and the other one is likely the period or the life cycle that you're in. Because let's say I'm a warrior type I might be in a merchant period. And to understand how that plays out, it's best, I talk about it in the book, in the Five Dharma Types book, um, and how each type evolves into another type. So if you're a warrior in a merchant period, that's actually a difficult period because warriors and merchants um, typically don't get along. Um, but anyway, you don't have to worry about that right now. Just find your type, find the type that resonates. Taking the test helps a lot. Uh, looking at your chart would help a lot. And people who have done my Dharma type certification training know how to do that. People who have done um, my uh, Delano professional training know how to do that. So if you know any of them, you can reach out and they will tell you your Dharma type. All right, so that's step one. Find your Dharma type. So the next two steps uh, are, may seem simple, but... Uh, the, there's some involvement here. So step two is live your Dharma. Because if you, let's say you're supposed to be a teacher, you're an educator, but you are in the stock market and you're playing, um, you know, a merchant. 
The people you meet there will never fully satisfy you. The experiences you have will never fully be fulfilling, even though you may make money or whatever. We have examples of this in uh, the Vedic literature and the Mahabharata and, and so forth, where like Dronacharya, for example, is one example, and, and there are many, of people who choose to live a different dharma. So the problem with that is when you choose to live a dharma that's not yours, is you can still be good at it. But the Bhagavad Gita says, Shreyan Swadharmo Vigunaha Paradharma Svanushtita, right? It's it, right? Okay. If you don't know that verse, it means better to be bad at your own dharma than to be good at someone else's. Because um, in, in doing your dharma, in doing another's dharma, there is constant anxiety, bhaya, bhaya bhaha. It is full of fear because you're constantly trying to keep up a facade. Have you ever been on a date or gone on Instagram or something and you're pretending to be something you're not? Unfortunately, even if you attract people, they're not the right people for you. We've all done it. I've done it. You've done it. You know what I'm talking about. So... When you do your dharma, you will tend to attract the right people. So in my case, I'm an educator dharma type. And it was in teaching that I met the people with whom I have the most profound relationships. It was not in doing sales, which I've done jobs in sales. I've done jobs in, you know, manual labor. I've done all kinds of stuff, right? We grew up without a lot of money so i've done a lot of different odd jobs everything from bartender to um you know manual worker to um, mover to whatever you name it um none of those really suited me and my dharma it was only when i began teaching that i began meeting the right people all right and then step three says Okay, you might meet the right people, but let's say you go on a date. Let's say you begin to interact with them. Now, what do you do? Well, you still have to be yourself. And all right, Simon, give me some examples. All right, let's start with if you are, say, a laborer dharma type. Many wonderful laborer, famous uh, dharma types. Oprah Winfrey, laborer dharma type. Um uh harrison ford and so forth they're, they're in my book um the labor dharma type is the foundation of society they are solid family oriented they are the the you could say they're the they're the, like the black hole at the center of the galaxy around which everything else revolves they're hardworking. they're loyal they're um they're not necessarily um the best teachers or or the best um, uh, at other things, but they are the best, uh, the hardest workers and the, the people who value um, uh, being real. Okay, so if you're a laborer type and you're on a date, uh, laborers are actually secretly romantic. So bringing flowers, opening the door, you know, uh, like old school conservative kind of things are typical of, of, you know, the laborer type. Um, and so do those things because you know what? It's charming when you do it if you are a laborer type. If another type tries to do it, it might seem a little sleazy or a little weird. What are you trying to buy me off? Or what? No, but when a laborer does it, it comes from the heart. OK, or cook something from scratch. Laborers are uh, acts do acts of service. You may have heard about the uh, um, what is it? The five uh, love types, the five. Um, slipping my mind. It's, it's exactly related to the five Dharma types. So acts of service relates the love languages. Thank you. I'm hearing you from the past, the future. You're, you're yelling at the screen. I heard you. The five love languages. Guys, this is nothing other than the five Dharma types. These, I did not invent the five Dharma types. I wrote a book channeling, in a, not really channeling, like, but 
researching and, and, and sort of sharing with you these five archetypes. But they're in everything. Um, I mean, we can show you the which segment of the armed forces would be best for you. If you're a laborer, it's the army. If you're a warrior, it's the Marines. If you're an educator, it's the Air Force and so forth. That relates to the element. Um, that's another conversation. The type of sports, the type of jobs you can have. Uh, again, this is general, but the Dharma types come in especially handy for love because you are attracting someone based on your core resonance, your core vibration, your true, real heart energy. And if you try to be someone else, you're going to attract the wrong people. Even if they're good people, they're not going to be right for you. And if, you, if you're trying, it, but if you don't know who you are, that's why step one is know and understand. Let's see, where's my hand? There's my hand. I'm not AI, I promise. Look, my hand just disappeared. This is just a green screen or whatever. Know and understand. Just knowing that you're an educator or a laborer, that's not enough. You have to know, okay, what are the qualities? What are the qualities I have to live up to? What are the qualities I need to stay away from in order to fully live my dharma? So, guys, it's very simple. The formula is simple, but it doesn't mean that it's sim simplistic or easy to execute because you actually have to do the thing, do the work. Like, you know, getting in shape is simple. You have to diet and exercise. But doing the work is where the nuance is. Okay, so if you're a laborer on a date, cook something for your partner. The way to a person's heart is through their stomach. Usually it says it, the way to a man's heart is through their stomach. But really, the way to a person's heart is through their stomach. This saying is made for laborer types. So if you're a laborer type, this works for you. Um, you can build something for your partner. You can give them a tactile sensory experience. Laborers relate to the earth element. And so something that's uh, kinesthetic or tactile. Give them a massage um or gardening you know get in touch with the earth the earth element so all of these things are good on a first date they're a good uh way for you to ground with your dharma type and um and to express it right do something of service for the person whom you're dating now you might ask well what if they're not a labor type what if i'm dating an educator you don't have to cater to who they are you should understand their type. You should understand, oh, okay, this is what makes them tick. But you should still be true to your type. And you can express that. You can say, look, I really love cooking for people. And uh, you don't have to like it. You don't have to taste it. Um, if you want to, here it is. I just made this. Just take a little bite and try it. And if you don't like it, we could do something else. And you won't hurt my feelings. Right? Don't be attached to people... And if they don't like it and, and they don't like what you do, then they're not for you, right? The right person will, will fit if you're doing your dharma. They'll, they'll, they'll just come and fit with you. And, and if they don't, then it's okay. You can still be friends with them. Um, nothing against that. All right. What if you're a merchant dharma type? Merchant energy is very different. It's the water element. So merchants love to give fun and to have fun what does fun mean either humor uh doing something new and exciting and interesting uh tickets to a broadway play or a comedy show or you know going on a on a motorcycle ride or you know through some interesting scenery like something that's new wonderful exciting Maybe a motorcycle ride, that'd be something else, maybe a warrior. But merchants are very good at knowing how to have a good time, at entertaining others. So being on a date with a merchant is actually kind of fun. Like you can't help but like, you know, start getting in the groove with it. Um, merchants may try to buy you off either with compliments or with with actual actually giving you gifts so this is the love language is gifts it can be as the name suggests now merchants don't have to be rich but as the name suggests 
it, it has to do with a given exchange of energy. Merchants love to give energy. What they get in return is gratitude. If they see you truly having fun and enjoying yourself, that feeds them. Because merchants tend to have an empty, open hole in their hearts. They may look like the life of the party. You know, you've got Muhammad Ali, you've got Marilyn Monroe, you've got the biggest stars, Leo DiCaprio, super mega stars, right? Very charming, amiable, but in their hearts, they feel empty. And because of that emp emptiness, they'll try to fill it with more experiences, more stuff, sometimes more drugs, more, 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 more. Um, but if you, you know, if you're on a date and, and you're with a merchant, give them gratitude and, and that will tend to feed a merchant. Have fun, like actually enjoy what they're giving you. If you want to make a merchant nervous, um, you can be like, hmm, yeah, that's okay. That was all right. What's next? Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. You know, you could you could be like that. They're like, whoa, this guy is not getting it. Uh, but don't play those games. Uh, that's if you just want to. Um, if a merchant's getting a little too cocky, you can uh, put them in there. Anyway, never mind that. So merchant type, be true to yourself. Uh, being around water because it is the water element in, in whatever way. A lot often merchants go drinking. Drinking water element or go to the beach or, or anything like that. Th those are good ways to uh, let your water element flow if you're a merchant. Next, warrior dharma type. Warrior is the fire element. If you're a warrior man, the thing that the world looks to you for is to have a strong spine and an open heart. Often, people think that having being tough means your heart has to be closed. That's not true. It means you have to have a spine, right? You have to stand up, look a person in the eye and have a certain demeanor. Like I won't take shit from anyone, but I'm also open to, you know, to loving people. So for warriors, um, don't try to be a merchant. Don't try to be the fun part guy or, or girl. Don't try to be, you know, the person who is a laborer, don't try to wow people with facts and, and oh, look, look at what I know. That's an educator. Be yourself. Your warriors have natural strength of personality and they fight for something. Stand for something. I stand for, I'm anti-apartheid. I stand for helping kids get out of um, uh, abusive families. I stand for this. And you can, you can be that. Um, show that you stand for something and you will attract the right person. Now, if you don't know what you stand for and you're a warrior Dharma type, find it. Find it. You, you don't need my book. You don't need, if you're a warrior Dharma type, your Dharma is to protect that which cannot protect itself. You have the means to do it. So go and, and attach. Now, how do you do it? Being around educators like myself is very helpful. Find an educator who can help steer your, your car in the right direction because you are a powerful engine and you can do things that none of, none of the other types can do, but you need direction. So if you don't know what you stand for, um, you know, find it. And you can look, get my book. It's 14 bucks, five Dharma types. Read the chapter just on the warrior. Read how the warrior integrates and disintegrates. Read some of the professions and so forth associated with it, and that'll give you start to give you direction, hopefully. So if you're a warrior, show that you stand for something. Have a strong spine and an open heart. Then if you're an educator, here is... <laughs> educators are the most awkward on a date because they are um, nerds. <laughs> so... Educators typically have their their faces buried in books or in computers and stuff. They don't relate necessarily that well with people, except on an intellectual level. So when it's about emotions and so forth, things can become difficult. So what do you do? Be yourself. 
be intelligent. Show how wise you are. You don't have to show how smart you are. Um, did you know that um, those calamari are actually cultivated in uh, in a coast of Italy that's actually very environmentally unfriendly? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, take it easy. You don't have to show everything you know on the first date, but also don't be afraid to share your wisdom and stand by it. Actually, I'm not going to have the calamari. Oh, really? Why? And then, then if people ask you, then explain. Don't volunteer. Oh, did you know that this bridge was built in 1947? And, and the architect, it's a funny story, the architect didn't want to build it, but then the city commissioned him to Did anybody ask you? No. But when prompted, when the world and the universe asks for your wisdom, they knock on the door, you can open that door of information knowledge, wisdom, sagacity, right? And share it. Don't be afraid to be that person. And again, step one is to, step two rather, is to actually live that Dharma type. So you will likely meet someone in the exercise of your Dharma, in the performance of your Dharma. So they'll already know who you are. So, but I'm giving you a scenario where you're maybe meeting someone at the grocery store or something and they don't know who you are. Okay, does, does that make sense? So finally, the outsider. Don't be afraid to be different. Now, don't be different just to be different. No, you're going to scare people off. But again, when prompted, hey, uh, so what do you, we just had a nice dinner. What do you want to do? Well, since you asked, you want to go run naked through the sprinklers? Or, hey, I'm going to go run naked through the sprinklers or whatever, right? Don't be afraid to be different because outsiders refresh society because the other four types can get boring and predictable. It takes the fifth type, the outsider, to refresh it, to bring new life, new energy into it. All right, so those are some tips on how to attract the ideal mate, then how to behave on the date, the first date. And you'll find that when doing that, it doesn't take that much effort. You don't have to keep up a persona because you might go on a first date and impress someone by how fun you are. But if you're not a merchant, man, you're going to have to keep that up forever. It's exhausting. Don't do it. Now, some of you might go, well, Sam, you know, I'm an educator, but lately I've been going out a lot and it's been fun. Could be you're in a merchant period. That period can last anywhere from six months to three or four years to up to 20 years sometimes. In the Five Dharma Types book, I give an example of merchants in outsider periods. Um, Kurt Cobain, merchant type, spent his whole life in outsider period. So he acted like an outsider, but he was really a merchant. Same thing with Marilyn Monroe. Um, how to know that? Um, only through your horoscope. You can see which which period you're in. But you can also feel it when you're in it. So, like, I'm, uh, when I was in, in merchant periods, I was selling classes, I was doing programs and, and so forth, much more actively than I am now. I just, I have a website now, people can go buy my classes. But I was really working it, and it felt right. Because... That was the time to merchandise, to promote, and so forth. Not in a merchant period now, so it's things are different. I'm more laid back about it, and blah, blah, blah. I'm just basically an educator period now. So I'm ed educating. That's it, like it or not. And um, so those are the three steps. Let me know if you have comments. If you want to see more of this kind of content, let me know, and I'll be happy to share. And if you want to get extra extra super duper content click join become a member for two bucks a month and you get access to a whole lot of new videos and opportunities that i uh, only give to members so see you in the member site and uh, we'll see you in the next video namaste everyone